Hello everyone, welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today we're making Crossy Road, a game where you guide a chicken across the road to get to the goal at the end. We have several objectives today. We're going to create a player that we can control with the arrow keys, create randomly generated cars, create a background nice. that looks good, and end the game when the player either reaches the gem or gets hit by a car. So let's get started! Alright, we created the project, and the first thing I'm going to do is delete Scratch Cat, and let's find a different character that fits our theme. I'm going to go for this head. Now, he's a bit big right now, so I'm going to shrink it down to about 30, which looks about right. Now, I'm going to make it move around with the arrow keys. I think the simplest way right now is to use this block which detects when a key is pressed. So if the right arrow key is pressed, then it should move forward by maybe five steps. And anytime you press the right arrow, it moves five steps. So we're gonna do the same here. It moves negative five steps. But what about up and down? Well, there's a pretty easy fix with this block. So the point and direction block changes the direction the character is facing. You could see here all the directions it could face. If we want it to move up, we can make it point up, which is zero. And that moves it up like that. So I think I'm gonna fix all these other blocks to work like that as well. Now for the down arrow, we need to make it face down, which is 180 degrees. Perfect, our chicken can now move around. But it looks a little bit weird right now. We don't want it to face up like that. It's just not natural for our game. To fix that, there's another block. It's called set rotation style. By default, it's on all around, which is what we just saw. But if you set it to left right, it doesn't have that weird problem anymore. All right, so that's our first goal done, but You'll notice that every time you start the game, it doesn't reset the position. So theoretically, you could just be running over here and then start the game and instantly win. We don't want that. So we could set the specific point at which it'll spawn. So we want it to be all the way down here. If we do that, every time you click the green flag, it'll automatically go there. Perfect! Now let's make the cars that will move across the street. And I think I'm gonna go with this convertible for now. And this is also really big. Yeah, 50 is gonna be a good size. Now, let's just make the basic script for how one car will move across the screen. So as you know, the cars in Crossy Road come in from the left and go all the way to the right and disappear. So let's make that. We click the green flag yep you can see that the car just slowly glides across the screen and hides you could change this value to make the car go faster and that one just zooms across the screen but the problem is in normal crossy road there's not just one car there's several just moving across the screen does that mean we have to duplicate the sprites 10 times well no there's a better solution it's through clone. Clones are basically duplicate objects that do exactly what you tell them to do. If we put this here and create a clone, it still does the exact same thing. If we make this car constantly spawn clones, it'll constantly spawn this exact copy of the car that'll do the same thing as it originally did. This spawns a car every second, and as you can see, it works just like normal, except there's tons of them now. Perfect! Except, in Crossy Road, the cars also spawn in random intervals, and that's why we have this block. So, it could spawn maybe between 1 or 2 seconds, just to give it a little bit of variation. It looks like it's working pretty nice. So that way the player can look for a spot that we can fit through and get past the road. Great. But it's a bit boring having just this one car 
And there's a bunch of car sprites that I really want to use. How do I get all of these cars to spawn at random? Well, remember this block? Well, we could just use it again. Every time a clone spawns, it could pick a random costume between one through five. Great, it looks like a bunch of different cars are spawning. These cars are a bit too big. Let's try shrinking that again. So that's the car, but remember in our demo that there was more than one road. So we're just gonna duplicate it. And instead of spawning in the same exact place, Let's make this one spawn a little higher up, and maybe it could go from right to left. That would be cool. It spawns at positive 220 and looks like Y37. And it collides to negative 250 and Y37. Don't worry if these coordinates are a bit confusing, you'll get used to them soon. Now if you run the project, you'll see Oh wait, I forgot to mention that the original sprite has to be hidden. And it's working good except the cars look like they're going at reverse and that looks weird, we don't want that. Now the cars will, will face to the left but they're upside down. And now the cars look normal. Great. So next step, let's add the gem at the top that can end the game. So I'm gonna use this one. It looks pretty nice. But we want it to be at the top. The player has to get past all of the cars as well. We're gonna put that to make sure it always is at the same position. Even though we're not gonna have it move, it's still good to have it there. Now, how will we do this? Well, there's a handy little script, a touching block. If the crystal's touching the hen, for example, this is gonna return true. So basically, anything inside of this only runs when the crystal is touching the hen like that. And if that happens, we want the game to end. For now, let's just put stop all. So if we go here and obtain the gem, You'll see, it ends the game, and we win. But, we're still immortal, and these cars can just go straight through us. Using the same knowledge, let's put that in the hen as well. And if we run it, you can see, oops, I bumped into a car, and the game ended. And like we saw earlier, touching the gem ends the game as well. There's just one little problem right now where the player could move around even after the game stopped. How do we fix that? Well, it's because we used this event block earlier. Anything inside of the when green flag clicked block will only run while the game is running, which is exactly what we want. In style sensing, we have something that looks exactly like that event block. That's just the text if the key is pressed. So we have a pretty simple fix here where we move all of the inputs to each one of these. So one side effect is the player looks like it's moving much more smoothly. And when you hit the car, I'm still pressing the keys, but you cannot move around. All right, so when you touch the gem, you don't even get a new win message or any kind of like applause and it's just kind of anticlimactic. So we're gonna paint a sprite because this is gonna be a customized message that we can display to the player when they win or lose. Let's call this message. That's the you win message and let's just center that on the stage. Let's create a you lose message as well. All right, perfect. And when the game starts, we want this to not be visible. But there's a problem. This thing detects if it's touching the hen, but how is this code supposed to tell the message code that it's supposed to show? Well, 
there's a block called the broadcast message block. And this is really handy when you want to transmit messages between sprites. So let's send a message that says player one. And back in the message sprite, it can receive the broadcast message and show the you win message. We could also make the player lose broadcast message to show the you lose thing as well. So now if you run it, when you bump into a car, it works. What's going on is it activates this block that broadcasts the message. It receives it on this other sprite, shows the message that says the player lost. Great. Now I think the last part is making the background. Now I'm gonna make a grassy background that looks just like the one in Crossy Road. So let's get a nice green background. There should be roads where the cars drive past. All right, that looks really nice. And I don't wanna do all that hard work again. So what I'm gonna do is group the object and that just makes it able to copy and paste the whole thing. And I'm gonna move it up here and make a second road. Nice, this looks really close to being an, a perfect game. Now I'm just gonna add some final touches. Just like that, we have our finished product. I hope you were able to follow along, and I hope you enjoy your new game. Feel free to add new features or experiment with existing ones. Here are some challenges listed from easy to hard if you need some ideas. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Goodbye.